two sisters, Amina and Desta, are playing near their village. Amina starts to tell her younger sister Desta about what happened to her and other girls when they were Desta's age. The World Health Organization defines female genital mutilation as all procedures that involve partial or total removal of the external female genitalia or other injury to the female genital organs for non-medical reasons. This has room to every girl. More than 200 million girls and women have undergone some form of FGM. If current trends continue, the number of girls and women subjected to FGM will increase significantly over the next 15 years. Does it happen everywhere, Amina? FGM is prevalent mostly in Africa and a few countries in Arab states, Asia and Latin America. In countries such as Guinea, Mali, and Somalia, nine out of 10 girls and women have been subjected to FGM. FGM is a violation of basic human rights of girls and women and a manifestation of the deep-rooted gender inequality. FGM has short and long-term consequences in the lives of girls and women, such as psychological trauma, painful menstruation, painful sexual intercourse, infertility, recurring urinary tract infections. Girls and women who have undergone FGM experience more complications during childbirth. FGM also increases the risk of stillbirth and early infant death. But why, Amina? Why does it have to happen to us? You were born beautiful and perfect, Desta. And if I can help you, I won't let anyone hurt you. Determined to save her sister from the horrors of FGM, Amina pleads with her parents not to cut Desta. She tells her parents that FGM is not required by their religion. It's a traditional practice that only causes harm and that needs to stop. Her parents look at their beautiful daughters and decide not to have Desta cut. It's time to eliminate FGM in their village and beyond. They call the community together and ask for the support of traditional and religious leaders to educate the community on the harmful effects of FGM. After several open discussions, the community takes a pledge to abandon FGM in their village. 10 years pass, and by now, the sisters are young adults. Amina has become a teacher while Desta is studying to become a midwife. I would like to introduce you to my sister, Desta. She has a story to share with you. When I was your age and my sister first told me about female genital mutilation, I was terrified that it was going to happen to me. Luckily, it didn't happen to me, in part because of changes that came to my village through a global program on FGM. Since 2008, UNFPA and UNICEF have been jointly leading the largest global program on female genital mutilation cutting to protect girls and women by accelerating abandonment of FGM and providing care for its consequences. Following holistic education and dialogue sessions, over 15,000 communities across the 17 countries covered by the program have committed to abandon FGM. More than 21,000 religious and traditional leaders have made public declarations stating that FGM is not a religious requirement. Over 110,000 doctors, midwives, and nurses have been trained on FGM prevention and care. 13 of the 17 countries supported by the joint program have developed national policy and legislation on FGM, including national action plans. However, more effort is still needed. The joint program is helping girls and women become role models and agents of change in their communities and nations by saying no to FGM. As we continue our efforts, we need nations to strengthen their human rights commitments and related legislation and enforcement. 
We all need to be ready to defend the human rights of all girls and women. The joint program needs your help to accelerate the abandonment of FGM. Working together, we can end female genital mutilation.